Good afternoon, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Um, hope you had a happy. Hope you had a Merry Christmas, and that um, you were you got the chance to spend some time with your family, um, creating fun memories and just enjoying family, good family moments. I also and had time with my family um some great moments but some concerning moments as well um today i just finished my therapy session and i just want to remind us that support truly makes people feel valued so i'm talking with um the therapist there's a lot of things that we went over and um, concerns that I had, even as it relates to one of my friends who went back to school after she was hit with a backpack. She was, she had a concussion. She received a concussion. And when she returned to school, she called me or I called. We, we spoke because she needed to tell me something. And she was telling me that when she returned, um, mind you, she had a concussion. She was out for a while. And um, she went back to work and like kids take it for a joke. She said one kid, he went and, and he, he the disrupt and they disrupt so much. And then the big boy, the boy says, oh, he's a tall kid, very tall kid strapped and you know. And he came up and told her, oh, he said he's going to hit you again. So this is the kind of environment that have me just thinking and as I spoke to her and, and it is so true and and I can see it how when things happen even if you feel like you know what I am strong I am better now that when you get in that situation back when you go back to that toxicity that space that was not the healthiest space as it relates to you because of things that were done, words that were said, threats that were made, then of course you're going to be anxious. And anxiety is not a good thing. Anxiety is never a good thing. You see people going to the doctors and as the therapist was sharing, so people went go to the go to, to therapist, to, to the doctor. And and doctor you can't find anything wrong with people because of what? It's all stress-related. It's all stress-related. We talk about the brain. And she says, when you look at the brain under this powerful microscope, and when people are happy, you see the brain lights up. But then when people are sad, the brain is in darkness. It's in darkness. And because there's nothing there to excite the brain and to keep it going... Um, then that darkness becomes depression, right? It becomes all sorts of things that just tears down your body, that tears down your system. Many people will not understand your situation until they walk in the shoe. Some people reach out and they're saying they didn't even know about the threat. So they'll sit there and they're, they're making assumptions that I just don't want to be at work when they don't know the full details. My fear is that if I go back in that building, and I was shocked when the, when the therapist said the same thing, that I have been teaching for long, guys. Don't think I'm chicken and, and I'm running away from responsibilities. That's not me. I've been teaching long enough. And as I said, in my years of teaching, we have had kids, I have had kids who have, I mean, kids get frustrated. They're, they're not perfect. So kids do cuss at you and they call you all sorts of things and ask you why you're so black and, and why this and why that. And, and, and they, they, they talk things that sometimes you have to, they call you the, the, I shared a video some time ago and the girl called me, you bitch. And I said, oh, your mother. Right? And then I apologized to the girl and, and just kept moving on. 
And I never stopped going to work. I never felt... I never felt that stress with all the B words and the F and Bs and all of that. Never. You, you go in and you just let it roll off your back like oil on a duck's back. But this one moment, I think it's a lot of little pieces that came together that made it so, so made it such a thing. And so, yes, if the if the assistant principal had spoken to the girl when she said, I um, take, pick up the banana peel and throw it on her, when she heard that, I think in my heart and of hearts, I know that if she had just said something to that kid, if she had just put her back in a good space, like, that's not what you do. Come with me. Let We need to talk about the expectations of the classroom. You cannot threaten somebody by um, telling somebody to throw something. That's an assault. That's an assault. You're threatening, you're telling somebody to hurt, to, to, to do something to somebody else. It's not, it's not acceptable. If little things like those had happened, then... I could have understood it because I doubt that it would have gotten to the next level where she walked up to me and blatantly threatened my life like that. So again, there are a lot of pieces we don't know. We don't know if they had weapons. We know they were found with lighters or what have you or whatever that is. I don't know. It wasn't on my watch. But it's like three of them. It's three of them in the group. When one has been expelled but the, the, the one expelled she was only cussing at me they didn't expel her because of anything she did to me her not being there is because of what she did to the AP so we usually laugh and said you know you see an AP or the principal and the kids call him you bitch shut up bitch and they, they oh my god you don't call the administrator a bitch oh and they hustle and they give them five days suspension <laughs> And I usually laugh at it and say to the and said to one principal one year, I said, Wow, I guess the teachers don't count. I guess we are bitches because you we never get the kids never get suspended or reprimanded for calling us out our names. No matter how we write it up, it's like we must take it. Because we're made to take it, right? But as soon as they say to the AP or the, or the administrator, the, 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 the principal, oh my God, you don't talk to them. And they get five days out. So that always really, you know. But as I said, for over the years, starting in New York, when kids would get frustrated, they knock over a desk. They, they, you know, they want to walk out, they ball up the face. But then coming up, then you have kids who get frustrated when they whisper under their breath. And you would say, well, you know, I give you respect, so I expect you to give respect back to me. And they would be quiet, even if they're sad, they're quietly sitting there. But then it got to where kids are not afraid anymore. They just say what they want to say, slam doors, punch walls, and do what they want to do. Until now, and then now they come and they threaten so when you see kids laughing at a teacher who went back and they're making a joke of it, how does that make me feel? Me going back in there to deal with these same kids except the one who has been suspended, who has been expelled. But the others are still there. They're all there. What do I do? I'm going to go in there and I'm just going to be tense and anxious, waiting for something to happen. How is that going to be? Am I going to sit there like somebody I know somebody's holding a gun and I'm just waiting for it to go off? It's not a good feeling, you know. It's not a good feeling. So, as I sit here with you, I'm just saying to you that I'm going through the therapy, and yes, I've come. I mean, my the, the pressure in my chest has been gone because I understand it. If she doesn't have it to give, she can't give it. So I cannot expect from her good leadership qualities if she doesn't have it to offer. 
And I'm, I'm okay with that because nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. Nobody knows everything. So I, I understand that and I accept it. But I want us to still understand that support makes people feel valued. Right? I appreciate who I am. But when you're working in a space where part of your safety is dependent on somebody doing the right thing. When you work in a space where respect and, and those little pieces of what makes life bearable is dependent on others to help get it done. When you work in a space where so much is happening around you, it is good when people notice, notice and support and encourage and support some more. A teacher's job is a hard job. You out there, you're filing papers. You know what your quota is. You're going to do what you do and you go home. Right? You're a nurse. They assign you seven beds. You get in there, you bathe your patients, you give them the medicine, you make sure they're comfortable, you answer to the bell when they ring it a thousand times and your shift ends and you go home and you get to the parking lot and you can breathe and you go home. Right? Policeman is out there patrolling, doing what they do, stopping cars, giving tickets, locking up people, but at the end of their shift, they get to go home. They go home. And they leave all of that behind them. But the teacher goes in and they have to work with 70 kids, 70 different behaviors. So many different needs, so many different kind of everything, right? And when you walk through the door, you're still didn't finish work because now you have to go home and plan for the next day you have to go home you have to grade papers you got to look at data to see what to change for tomorrow where to put these kids for tomorrow which kids are um, have mastered something so they can go ahead and work which kids need you one-on-one -on -one? and which kids can do well with just a partner your work continues Sometimes you go to bed, you can't even sleep because you're worried. Oh, I got to make some copies of this one. I have to make sure I do the exit ticket, the assessment for them. You always have to keep working. And so when your mind is not there, when you are threatened, when you have faced challenges that are unnecessary, it really puts a damper on things. So when you look at teachers out there, they're going through their things and they're going through and they're just dragging. And sometimes you do talk to them and they would have made changes if things were different for them, but they're just there. A lot of teachers are not invested because they come in and they, okay, we'll just pass them on. Some teachers are coming in, they're just looking for the summer break and they still get it, you know, like they get, that two months off. But every teacher should have a therapist to talk to just for cleansing. Every single teacher. Because I'm sure there's no shame. I've said it before. There's no shame. You just need that person who can just help you to relieve some of that build up. A lot of teachers, they're going through things and because they're not saying anything and they're not speaking to anybody and they go through and, and some of them lash out and some of them are yelling every single day. It's not a good thing. It's not a, it's not a, a, a job that you're happy with. If you have to be yelling and telling kids more than once and begging and pleading till you have to get to screaming, how is that healthy? But you got to stay in it because... Sometimes you need to step back and say, the money is what it is. You've worked all the years, so you've gotten to that point. But is it worth it, though? And so as I go through my processes, 
and I am evaluating it. I'm, again, as I said, I'm not alone. I'm a single parent who <coughs> raised three kids that are strong kids, powerful kids. They have opinions too. They evaluate and they have feelings too. My son went through the trauma just as with his mother because he's, he, he is concerned. Not about that one who made the threat, but the copycats who might think it's okay to also do it. So I don't want anybody to sit out there and think, oh, she looks happy. Oh, she looks nice. Oh, she looks so well. She looks so bright. Yes, I am, I am healing my, taking care of my mental health. I'm taking care of my mental health. I'm not going to sit here. And when the, the therapist talks about if somebody doesn't have it to give to others, they cannot give what they don't have. I'm telling you, it lifted something from in right in this chest plate right here because there was so much anger to know that a person in charge failed so miserably so there was a lot of anger in there thank god that i went to the doctor and he referred me to 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 some to, to a psychologist because i probably would have sat there couldn't couldn't get rid of the the pressure because i was just focusing on why didn't she do something? Why didn't she do something? But when I spoke to her, I felt like the burden lifted. And I know that I can apply those words, not only to her, to my situation, but to other situations. I don't need to hold things in and feel bad that this or that. I understand it now. Nobody can give what they don't have to give. Nobody can. I don't care. Education. Don't talk about education, people. Education is, is not it. When it comes to your whole, your, your, your health, your mental health, your physical health, your emotional health, it's not about education at all. It's not. So, again, I say, when you go through things, you're in a bad relationship at home, husband is volatile, if he threatens your life, what do you do? If you have to be in that home, you're always on high alert, right? Somebody threatens you, you're always going to be on high alert because you're wondering, when will they strike? Were they serious or not serious? You get confused. So your body is constantly high alert. And that high alert is wearing you down. And then because of these things that are wearing you down, then your body starts producing all these pent-up cortisol, as the therapist says. And as it builds up, then you find the aches and the pains. They call it arthritis, right? But that's what it is. And so you have to find yourself in that space where you can feel valued. And then you have to find yourself in the space where you are strong enough to speak to someone. A lot of us, we feel if we talk to somebody, they're going to tell my business. And people are going to laugh at me and say, oh, be crazy, may I talk to them? Don't ever do, no, don't feel like that. <clears throat> it's good when you go out there and talk to somebody <clears throat> instead of sitting and, and suffering alone. So a lot of people, they run to the doctor, and especially in Jamaica, and then they say, why? May I go a doctor, doctor, saying can't find nothing to me. A people up oh, me, a people do this to me, a people do that. And when it's not so, it's just stress. It is just stress. And until you can find that place in your heart to forgive and to let go, it's going to be there tearing you down. 
And so, yes, whenever you go, a doctor said, boy, your blood pressure is that, 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 that. I can't say anything wrong. We did your blood work, it comes back normal. I can't say anything wrong. Then get a therapist. Go talk to a therapist. Now go to an Obia man. Can you only take in your money and add more stress to your life because they're going to tell you something about your neighbor, your family who grudge you and them stuff. And then it's going to add more stress to your life, I don't think. And it's not going to, it's not going to go well. You go to the doctor, they say they don't care if I don't. Tell them to refer you to a therapist, man. And sit down and talk to them and see what's bottling up inside of you that's weighing you down, that's building up all this cortisol that is creating problems in your brain, slowing you down, creating the pains in your back and your knees and your shoulders. Go out there and talk to people and get help. That's the life we live. But also, but remember, the support makes people feel valued. Support makes people feel valued. Support your teachers. Support your children. Support <laughs> your friends. Support makes people feel valued. Makes a huge difference. So now the holidays are gone, my people. And we have New Year's coming up. And a lot of us, we ate all sorts of stuff this morning. And last night before I went to bed, I did boil my center pots, the, the things, the little pots. I did boil my make my cup of hot tea from senna leaves and senna pods, and I drank that, and that has cleaned out all the backed up goat meat, all the backed up oxtail, all of that. It pushes all of that out my system. Cause we know how long those things can stay in our bodies, and so that's what I did. Um, so make sure you do your your your, your cleansing, guys. Wash, cleanse out your colon. You know, get something, get drink something that can just flush out all the backed up stuff, all the food you had over the holidays. That might just find a spot to sit down and just sit down there in your stomach. Flush it out. And so that you, you, your bowels will be back in action um, with your fruits and your vegetables and just be in a good, a good way, um, keeping it clean and healthy. So make it a great day by trust, my people. Take care of yourselves and don't sit and go through stress. Stress is never good. It tears you down. It tears you totally down. So don't go in. Don't, don't do that. Get the support you need. Love to all of you. Thank you to all my new subscribers. Oh, thank you. Thank you to all my old subscribers who have been here with me forever. I so love, love, love all of you. Thank you. For those of you consistently comment on the videos, thank you. For those of you are liking the videos, watching and liking them, thank you. And thank you for all your company, all your prayers, all your upliftment, all of it. I thank you. I thank you. Without you, there's no Miss Beth's Productions. And so I thank you for being here on the journey with me. I'm my little one-stop shop where I sing. I do poetry, I talk to you, I read, I, what else do I do? <laughs> I cook. <laughs> thank you for supporting and thank you for being on this journey with me. Totally, totally.